Hello students, in this video we'll see an example of computing the area in one leaf of a polar rose. Let's consider the polar equation, the polar curve, r equals 8 sine of 2 theta. I'd like to find the area in one leaf of this curve, which is called a rose. Find the area of one of its leaves. So let's do it. So what does this look like? So let's plot this polar curve. Of course, when you plot polar curves, it's always just an exercise in patience and using lots of angles, right? So let's look at the angles over here. So when r is equal to, when theta is equal to zero, what happens? So when theta is equal to zero, that's going to tell us that r is equal to zero. r is equal to zero. So we start over here. The polar curve starts at the uh, at the axis at the origin, right? Now let me increment a little bit over here. So when theta increments to a value like, say, for example, pi over twelve, pi over twelve. Then what will happen? We'll have 8, then r will be 8 times the sine of what? The sine of 2 times pi over 12 is pi over 6, so that's the pi over 6. And the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, right? So this is going to be 8 times half or 4, right? So as I go to pi over 12, I go up to a radius of 4. So I go maybe like over here, so there's pi over 12. I go out to 4. Okay. And then when I plug in theta equals, for example, let's do maybe pi over 6. Where's it going to go? A little bit of a larger angle then r will be what? r will be 8 sine of what? When I plug in pi over 6, I'm going to get pi over 3. And the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So this is going to be an 8 times root 3 over 2, or a 4 root 3. So it gets a little bit bigger yet. Over here, so I go to a different angle. Get a little bit bigger. OK, and then where is this going to be maximized? Well, the sine's maximized when the sine, when I get theta equals pi over 2. So I plug in theta equals pi over 4 theta equals pi over 4, maximizes this thing, so then r will be equal to what? r will be equal to 8 sine of 2, pi, 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2. The sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, so r is going to be equal to 8 here. And that's where it's as big as possible. So when we went pi over 4 angle, we go all the way out to 8 over here. And then what happens? Then everything reflects backwards. It starts to decrease in the same sort of rate over here, over here. And then let's think about what happens when theta, when, what, what happens when I plug in theta equals pi over 2, for example. So when theta is equal to pi over 2, I'm going straight up on this axis over here. When you're pi over 2, then r is going to be equal to 0 because I have the sine of pi. So this rose, this rose is going to develop like this. The curve does this. And that gives me the, the petal of the rose. So that's my first petal. So there's one petal over here in the first octant, and I'd like, and that stems from what angles? This stems from theta goes from zero all the way up to theta equals pi over two. And now, if you continue plotting angles, what you're going to see, and you're using the symmetry of this thing, is you'll see that this rose is going to continue to develop. It's going to do symmetric over here, a symmetric loop over here and a symmetric loop over here, right? So you're going to get a shape that looks like this, a polar curve that looks like this. So we're interested in finding the area of this petal of the polar curve, OK? So let's do it so recall what the polar formula area is. So the area formula in polar coordinates is 1 half the integral from alpha to beta of what? Of f of theta squared d theta, right? So let's compute this integral over here. So our area of this leaf, the area of one leaf, is 1 half the integral from 0 to pi over 2. Then I'm going to square this function over here. I'm going to 64, because that 8 squared is 64, then a sine squared of 2 theta d theta. Great. Now, uh, 64 divided by 2 is going to be what? That's going to be a 32. So pull that 32 out. And I'm going to use power reduction over here. So power reduction says that the sine squared of 2 theta is 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta over 2. And that's going to turn into a 4 theta because I have a 2 theta in there. So I'm using power reduction over here, so that's going to turn into a 4 theta. Sine of cosine of 4 theta all over 2 d theta. Okay. So this 1 half integral is going to be easy to do, right? This is going to be a 32. And then that's going to be a theta over 2 from 0 to pi over 2. And then I have a minus cosine of 4 theta over 2. I claim that an antiderivative of this is going to be negative sine of 4 theta over 8. Let's check that. The derivative of sine is cosine, so that I get the negative cosine of 4 theta. And then the 4 comes out, so 4 over 8 is the 2. So that works. Again, theta goes between 0 and pi over 2. 
So let's see what happens over here. So when I plug, let's look at these limits over here on the, on the complicated part. When I plug in pi over two, four times pi over two is two pi. The sine of two pi is equal to zero. The sine of zero is also equal to zero. So these ugly terms over here with the sine of four theta are gonna vanish. And I'm just gonna have a pi over two over two, that's a pi over four. So this is gonna be 32 times what? Times pi over four. 32 over four is equal to eight. So this is gonna be eight pi. And eight pi is the area in this leaf. So of course, if you just multiply this by four, 32 pi will be the area enclosed by this entire curve. So the area of one leaf is eight pi using this formula. So it's important to remember that when you're plotting a polar curve, trying to find the area between a polar curve and the polar axis or inside a loop of a, of a pedal or inside a limousine or inside a cardioid or any of these fancy polar curves, it's always important to plug in what? A whole bunch of angles say to sort of see how the curve develops. We can see that my curve was a, little bit, was a little bit rough at first, but then I was able to use the symmetry to sort of see, oh, in fact, this does look like a perfectly symmetric petal of a, of a rose. So it's important to plot angles when you're doing these polar calculations, and it will also help you when you're finding the limits of integration. Thank you very much.